What's up guys, CP Moda here back with another video and it's not every single day that we find a product that is fit for a dictator and in fact it's also too not every day that we find an SSD that's branded for a dictator and I guess if you get where we're going it's not every day that we find an SSD absolutely dripping in RGB but today we found something that meets all those criteria. So, in typical dictator fashion, I demand you say hello to the Maxun MS240 RGB SSD. Because in this country, everything has RGB. Or, and also due to dimension, it's part of the dictator series SSD and has plenty of RGB. Yeah, hashtag dictator life or whatever the box is actually saying. Anyway, into the actual video for this guy in the design department, it is definitely where the money is really being spent. Up front, we get ourselves an aggressive LED looking thing on the top of this guy with four LED kind of areas that all light up in this pulsating RGB wave thing that really screams to be on display. If you're thinking about putting this in computer inside like a normal drive cage or behind something or heck, even in a laptop, don't. It's going to be a waste of your money. This guy needs to be out and about and in a system that's also too dripping in RGB. It has a little bit of an extra thick kind of plastic build to it, so um, don't expect any kind of cooling performance to come with this. It's sort of like more about looks than any kind of performance, but um, I have to say it is definitely freaking unique. Now, uh, in terms of actually inside of this guy and the actual design thickness wise, as I did mention, it is a little bit thicker. So uh, if you are limited in terms of vertical height, you may run into a little bit of a problem here. As I did notice, yes, it is thicker than a standard two and a half inch drive. Again, thanks to those extra RGB nurse inside of this particular guy. But all in all, Design wise, well, it's a normal SSD with some LEDs on the top of it. And I have to say, usually LED lighting on cheaper products, especially from the internet, aren't exactly that great, but um, definitely lighting is well, pretty much on point. Um, it is pretty evenly lit. There's no hot spots. There's no dim spots. It actually isn't too bad there. Now, actually cracking inside of this guy, let's see what this thing actually has under the hood. And well, inside we find ourselves a very interesting design. Thanks to the added thickness, I was actually expecting a separate LED lighting panel to the actual PCB of the SSD. But in fact, I was wrong, where in fact we get ourselves just a standard single long full size PCB with LEDs on one side and the SSD over on the flip side. Now, if we flip the housing over, we do see this diffusion layer that makes the LEDs shine through at an even sort of a lighting, so that's pretty cool here. And then if we look at the LEDs themselves, we find ourselves three MBI 512 4G LED controllers, or ICs rather, and as far as I can tell, we find this chip right here that looks like it controls all the channels. So we've got three of the same chips, which I'm expecting to be R, G, and B. And then we've got this other weird other looking chip set that looks like it drives those three channels. Now, if you know more about LED light controlling and stuff, do let me know down in that comment sections. But from my speculation, the bigger looking chip controls the three little sort of chips and those three chips mixed together for the R, G, B colors and the synchronization and all that type of stuff. Um, Either way, most of this isn't really documented, so it's not like I could pull out a spec breakdown or a manual anyway. I guess it is what it is. However, if we flip over to the other side into the SSD, which we do know a little bit more about, holy snap, we actually get ourselves some pretty decent components. Sure, it might be a dictator's SSD, but damn, it's actually got some pretty decent parts in here. With the SanDisk chips in here being the 05138 chips, both of them at 120 gig each for a total of 256 gigs of storage, and the Silicon Motion SM2258 XT controller. All in all, this is a solid package for an SSD. In fact, the same sorts of specifications are found on much higher end SSDs from SanDisk and the likes from those bigger well-known companies. So, um, bit of a thumbs up from me and gives us a hint in what we can expect in the performance department. But once we throw this guy back together, we can put it in our computer, admire those SSD LEDs again, uh, but actually take a look at the performance department and take a look over there. Sure enough, we don't really find anything too wrong here. With over 520 megabytes per second on the reads and 475 megabytes per second on the writes, it isn't exactly blowing anything out of the water. However, at the same time, it is definitely able to hold its own in the uh, SATA-based SSD world. Now, jumping into HD Tune and also to Atto, 
though these numbers are also too backed up right here, um, with actually real world gaming performance and loading time being absolutely on point, and overall makes a pretty decent experience. Looking at our dodginess graph right here, we see that it scores a 3 out of 10, thanks to the fact that it has pretty decent internals, and the only real questionable part about this whole thing, other than the whole dictator branding, um, is the fact that it is from a company that isn't really that big, I mean, when was the last time you heard of Max Sun here in Australia? Probably never. Um, so it is a little bit questionable there, but all in all with decent components, it isn't as sketchy. And again, that 3 out of 10 is quite low uh, versus 10 out of 10, which would be your most dodgy drive. And that brings us to the question and a bit of a TLDR, should you go ahead and buy one? And I have to say, well, depending on who you are, definitely yes or most likely yes. The internals are definitely on point, they're SanDisk and uh, Silicon Motion internals, so they're pretty much the standards at the moment. Um, and then the design is very, very unique, and those RGB LEDs are definitely hard to say no to. Unfortunately though, with those RGB LEDs, there is no control over them, so you're basically stuck with the constant waving rainbowy thing. Um, but all in all, it isn't that bad if your whole PC is also too a rainbow waving thing. So really comes down to what your build is, but definitely is extremely unique and screams look at me, and I guess, hey, the dictator branding is questionable, but it's there nevertheless. But guys, let me know down in that comment section, what do you think of RGBs on SSDs? I think it's interesting, I would like to see the category get more development in it before I put my money down on actually buying some for my system, but do let me know what you think down below. If you want to pick one up, I'll leave them linked down in that description box so you can go ahead and grab them there. But guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.